Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Welcome back, Fading Memories listeners. I am very excited. Our guest is a first-time podcast guest today, and she is the owner of Miss Dolly Star. So I'm going to let her explain what who Dolly is, but thanks for joining me, Karen. Thank you for having me. So I'm glad to be your inaugural podcast. That's exciting. Yes, very much. So tell us about yourself and Dolly and how Miss Dolly Star, who is a miniature cow, what you guys do, because it's very <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> okay. So I'm the founder of Miss or the Dolly Star Foundation. The Dolly Star Foundation was um, started last year in 2021. And what happened was, is that I am a native to Arizona. My parents, we grew up on a dairy farm. And during um, COVID, my dad had to have open heart surgery. And unfortunately, after that procedure, he ended up with some memory issues. And uh, we had to take him to a memory care facility. And of course, when we were there, they're like, you know, we really highly recommend doing activities that your loved ones used to do prior to them being sick. And I'm like, um, hello, we are dairy farmers. Like, I don't know what you got going on over here, but I don't know that any of this is going to roll. My dad doesn't paint pictures, you know, like that, the traditional, you know, we play Scrabble. Okay. My dad didn't do that when he was at his best. Right. So I was like, what if I bring a cow and my brothers who were, you know, business partners with my parents in the dairy farm were like, um, you're, I mean, you're, you're just crazy. Like, that's not going to work. And I'm like, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> so after a lot of research, I found that they have these mini cows out there and they stand about, you know, like the smallest ones are about 36 inches high, which is, you know, like counter size. Um, and then I, I found a breeder, you know, these, these animals are still very, very rare. And so I found a breeder that just thought the idea of me bringing him to a memory care facility was like amazing. And so she's like, let's, let's make this happen for you. So Dolly star, that's how Dolly star started. She, she's a, a American white park at birth. She weighed all of 20 pounds. She was only 12 inches. I mean, she was itty bitty, right? The normal cow is a hundred pounds, um, you know, three feet tall already kind of situation. So you know, she really is tiny, which makes her just the perfect size to walk her in. Like she's the size of a pony. Right. Okay. Um, so I got her, everybody fell in love with her. In the meantime, my dad has like made a full recovery because it was something from like a brain infection, which caused the memory loss. Oof. But, um, so I, my family was like, what do you do now? And I'm like, well, I started this because of my dad, but I'm sure there's other people in need. So now I go to like, that's my little passion. I, I take her to memory care facilities and I bring joy and comfort to the, to those people that are in those um, residents. Right. And it is so rewarding and it's never been done before. Right. That's true. I was just having a conversation with another caregiver coach. We both have dogs named Remy. Mine's a golden retriever. Hers is like a black lab mix. And we were like, Hmm, this is different to cow with memory care. <laughs> I'm like, I'm really looking forward to, to learning more because I took two of my three dogs. I only have two at this point, but I took the oldest one with me to visit mom and he was not having it. He literally slept under the chair, touching me. I could just sense the please get me the hell out of here mom i hate this place i don't understand this place which is kind of strange because if you know anything about golden retrievers they love everybody so i don't know what vibe he was getting but he did not like it and then i don't know what possessed me to take the youngest one who is five and a half currently um but i he had a blast i didn't know if i was going to get him out of there including one woman that decided he belonged to her and she was very unhappy that he had the pinch collar. 
<laughs> it was just like, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get this dog home. She's going to fight me for this dog. Well, I get the same thing. Like people That's- are always like, hey, can you just leave her here? Because <laughs> like right now, the our foundation is very, very little. Like I pretty much do this on the on my side days, my days off at the salon. And so I try to back up my appointments. Like I try to do three every single time I take her out. Right. So typically the second, the third visit, she's a little tired and she will typically just lay down, you know, like a dog will sometimes lay down, but she will just lay. And, you know, at first I was like, when the first few times it happened, I was like, Oh, you know, people aren't going to like that. Right. Like they're, they were her walking around or whatever. Actually they love it. They want her to stay all the time. They just literally watch her eating, like chewing on her cud. And they're like, this is so soothing. This is so relaxing. And I'm like, all right, there you go. Right. Like it just is something you don't ever see. And I will say going into these memory care facilities, I've learned so much. Like I grew up on a dairy and of course I have the memories I have because you know, that's how it was. Right. Mm -hmm. But you walk into these memory care facilities and a lot of these places, you know, you're 60, 70, 80, 90, even a hundred, right. There was no technology back then. So most of the people in those facilities have a core memory from their childhood that brings them back to agriculture. So whether it was like my grandma grew up on a farm, like, and when we were kids, we would spend every summer there, or my first job was at a dairy and I milk cows, or I mean, we had this woman that milked cows in Norway that we Ooh, found out about, you know, like, so to hear these memories and their core memories, their childhood memories, their, those long, long time memories. So people remember those, they may not remember what they just had for lunch, <laughs> but they will remember, oh my gosh, like a cow in here. I remember seeing cows when I was a kid, like it is really, really rewarding. And like I said, like, I don't think anybody's ever thought about that before. No, right? I've never Freaky seen it. Out. I have a, a friend who's um, very senior dog at this point. They do hospital visits and they have, she has to bathe her every time to go mm-hmm. in. So that was what I'm like, do they have any requirements to bring Dolly in? You know, like, oh. obviously you don't want to uh, pasture gook on her hooves. <laughs> <laughs> So I, um, I'm bougie, right? My cow is bougie. That's just what we do. Um, Dolly gets a bath every time we go for a visit. So like she, it's a process. Like we glamour out, she gets all the shampoo on her. We do her hooves, we do everything. And, um, I mean, she absolutely loves it. And of course, you know, (laughs) Like when you see this like sparkling white cow that walks into your facility, her eyelashes naturally are like just pow, right? She has the most amazing eyelashes. It's just like, what? This is so weird. So, you know, but fun, you know, but yes, I, she gets groomed and that's why the process takes so long. You know, it takes me two hours to groom her. We got to dry her. We got to do all the things. We got to haul her over to where she is or where we're going to take her. We usually do an hour visit, um, you know, but she absolutely loves it. So we've been training her since the day I got her. I got her when she was 28 days old. So she lived in my backyard. She is my furry daughter. That's what everybody calls her. (laughs) Um, You know, my family just knows, you know, like that's just our other kid, right? Like, or the grand cow, whatever you want. Um, but we walk her all the time, you know, like she, we train her like, you know, cause I want to make sure not only are my seniors safe that we're going to visit, but I want to make sure she feels comfortable and she's safe as well. Right. So lots of training, lots of wheelchairs coming at her all the time. You know, we do all of that type of stuff. Um, yeah. That's so. amazing. So there was, uh, my old hometown was an, ag- it still is an agricultural town. Now it's a agricultural suburb of San Francisco. <laughs> it's, oh, kind of a, okay. it's an interesting, it's, it's an interesting personality. It's a little schizophrenic, but it's, it was a fun place to be. And there was a gentleman that had two miniature cows and he just walked them along the sidewalk. Like they were dogs. And 
he got kind of similar attention. So I'm familiar a little bit with miniature cows. Um, obviously she's not a dairy cow, right? That's not what miniatures well, are like. Give me the lowdown on the, on the breed. So she's a, a beef breed. Okay. So they took beef cows and they kind of like made them smaller, smaller, smaller. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, people ask all the time, like, does she give milk? That's a little bit more on the education of the cow process. Like cows don't give milk unless they have a baby of their own. Right. So she doesn't have a baby, right. She's only one. We will not breed her. Um, she's very, very little. So the likelihood of her having an extra tiny, tiny cow, it's, you just never know. So, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to breed her. Did you spit, spit choose her specifically because she was an extra small miniature cow, which that sounds, that's giving me like fun, fun bar candy sizes. It is not even lunchtime here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I knew that there were, there are many cows out there. Right. And so when I spoke, when I finally found a breeder that, you know, was able to like kind of get me something sooner than later. Cause there's like a five to seven year waiting list for these animals. Yikes. I was like, my dad's in the hot, like my dad's there now. Right. Like put me on the list, but I don't want to wait five years. So well, that's a long time. It is. And you know, you don't know what happens in five years, but you know, I, I knew that this was something I needed to do. So when I found this woman and she's like, you know what, we'll just find you the right animal. And I was like, I, the smaller, the better, right? Because I, the plan is, is that I'm taking her in. So when, when Dolly was born, she is, she's extra tiny. She's really, really tiny. So. And how you said she's like 36 inches tall. Is that uh, to the shoulder? Yeah. She's about 30, 34 right now. 34. Okay. Right now. okay. When I'm done here, I'm going to have to measure how tall my golden retrievers are. I should, they're not that tall, but uh, I, I just need a visualization. <laughs> well, yeah. We take her, um, we've taken her downtown Gilbert. Like there's a lot of you know, things going on over there or whatever. And there are dogs that are bigger than her. So. We have dogs in my neighborhood that make my golden retrievers. Like people think golden retrievers are large. Yeah. Technically golden retrievers are a medium sized breed. So there's a dog in my neighborhood named Boomer. Oh, I forget what breed he is, but he makes my, I, my youngest dog, Remy was a rescue and he was malnourished. So at seven months old, he weighed 35 pounds instead of like 70. Oh. So he's my, the, the male that was my soulmate that was actually supposed to be a show dog weighed 85 pounds. Remy weighs 64. Okay. So, um, you could kind of like, so he's like, Dolly weighs about 400. <laughs> That's a lot, but mm-hmm. she's, a, she's much bigger and stockier. So, yes. But you know, and then the other thing is, is like a traditional cow, right? A traditional milking cow, like a Holstein cow where it's 15, 1500 pounds. So that just kind of gives you an idea of like the smallness of what she is. So she's like 25% sized. Yeah. If I'm doing the math close (laughs) a little, maybe, maybe a little bit bigger than 20, a fourth. Yeah. So have you ever run across any resident? Like when I took Remy to memory care, I thought, well, let me take him over to the assisted living. And so we walked in to the activity area of the assisted living. And this one woman, she had to be like 150 feet away from me. Like we were not close and he's on a leash, obviously. And she freaked the heck out. Just keep him away from me. I'm like, it's a golden retriever. Like, give me a break. It's not a Rottweiler. It's not like scary police dog looking dog. It's a tiny golden retriever. And having grown up with dogs, I get really a bit perturbed with people that are terrified of dogs because to me, it's just, it's just like wrong. I mean, I get it. They've had a bad experience, so I didn't try to force them on her or anything. I'm, I'm, yes, it makes me a little irritated because dogs bring so much joy to your life, but I am not stupid enough to try to like rehab somebody. So, you know, it was, it was a little strange. Like all, everybody in the memory care just loved on the dog. Even the ones that were kind of, there was some that were a little bit indifferent, but they still kind of enjoyed watching the other residents interact. And this woman was like practically screaming in the street. It was just right. quite wild. I'm assuming you probably don't get that with a cow. 
Well, you know, like when we walk in, like, obviously we all know that they also like, whether it's assisted living or memory care or whatever, everybody has like their own issues that they have. Right. So some people like animals, some people don't, So you know, like maybe you have not a fondness of a cow. I don't, you know what I mean? I don't know. So we walk in and then, you know, we kind of allow the, the residents, uh, whether it's like I said, assisting our memory, like to kind of like lead how we're going to um, have our experience. Right. Some of them are like, let me take my picture. You know, I need a selfie, ah, you know, and so we do the selfies and some people want a brusher and we, you know, get out the brushes and we brush. And some people are like, you know what, that's fine. You can keep it right over here. Right. Like some people just have a fear of stuff. So we never, we never push anything or anything like that. We just, you know, whatever is where your comfort level is, is where we allow ourselves to be. I guess my suburban roots are showing because I'm thinking in general, people probably have had less negative experiences with a cow than they would a dog. <laughs> but if I guess you grew up in an agricultural town, that might not be true. So that might, Yeah. I mean, who knows? Like <laughs> my suburban bias is flying, fl- flying free. <laughs> See, this is I. This, like. I love to be curious about new things. And like, I didn't just like, as a dog lover, look at Dolly and go, are you kidding me? Why the heck would they do that? I'm like, no, that sounds really interesting. <laughs> and I, I have not had the opportunity to pet a miniature cow. Um, I'm assuming they're, I don't know if it's called fur, but is their hide um, soft, not soft, but coarse. Opposite. Um, it's kind so of early this morning seasons, and I live in Arizona, right? So in Arizona, it's like 115 degrees. Um, she's white. I mean, there's different color cows or whatever, but she's white. And so, you know, her fur sheds a lot during the summer. And <laughs> like right now, even though it's only, let's see what it's only 90 <laughs> degrees <laughs> here. Um, she is shedding a little, a little bit more, but that's because she's going to get a little bit of a thicker coat. Right. So if you guys follow me on social media, you'll notice like she kind of has one kind of hairstyle during the summer. And then she'll have like a furry type of hairstyle in, in the winter. Right. But, um, you, we can also clip that down, you know, we can go mm-hmm. out and give them a haircut or whatever the case may be. But, um, it's, it's like fur, like a dog. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my, my, the, the most experiences I have had with cows is riding my bike past them and they have a tendency to moo at cyclists. So we okay. move back. So Dolly will moo at anybody who doesn't pay attention to her. Oh gosh. That is hysterical. And I love it because one of my old, my girl golden, if you, if you watch her, we had a group of people here a couple of weeks ago. And she literally goes from one person to another, sticks her head under their hand, keeps moving her head until they pet. And once she feels that she's gotten all she can get out of that person, she moves on to the next one and does the same thing. And most people aren't aware because they're not watching her. But I love to watch her because it is just the funniest thing. It's like she's just like a love hoe. And so I love it that Dolly does the same thing. So Dolly does the same thing. And it's been like that since the very beginning. Like we would walk her down the neighborhood, right? And if if there were people that were walking the other direction, most of the time people will stop. I mean, they're like, oh my God, it's a cow walking down the street, right? It's a tiny cow. (laughs) If you didn't, or maybe you saw her last week and you're like, oh, I already saw her. I don't need it, whatever. She's like, wait, where are you going? Moo, right? Like moo, whatever. Uh, the minute I walk on to the property where she's at currently, like she used to live in my backyard, but now we have her a little bit of a bigger facility. Um, like she knows it's me. She told me, right? Like, so she starts moving or whatever. And then we get her all glammed up and we go for our walks and do all the things. But I'm like, every time if the school bus goes by, like the kids love it in the morning. Cause if I'm walking her before school, there's quite a few school buses that go down the route where where I walk her, but you know, like the kids have gotten really used to like, like leaning their little hands at the windows, right. And looking, and if something passes by and they didn't like, she didn't notice somebody was looking at her. She gets very upset, you know, like in the knowing fashion. That is just, that's amazing. So this is going to be kind of a weird question. This is, this is my suburban roots showing again. I know how intelligent dogs are. Are cows kind of similar? Because people just assume, you know, oh, it's just a farm animal and they just kind of assume they're kind of dumb. But I know that that's probably not true. Obviously, it sounds like it's not true with her. 
Now we're going to take a quick break for an ad. These ads help me continue to bring the show to you for free. When I learned that despite eating as healthy as possible, we can still have undernourished brains, I was frustrated. I also live in a farming community, so I'm aware that our food isn't grown as well as we need. Learning about Neuro Reserves, Relevate, and how it's formulated to fix this problem convinced me to give them a try. Now I know many of you are skeptical, as was I. However, I know it's working because of one simple change. My sweet tooth is gone. I didn't expect that, and it's not something other users have commented on, but here's some truth. My brain always wanted something sweet. Now fruit usually did the trick, but not always. One bad night's sleep would fire up my sugar cravings so much they were almost impossible to ignore. You ever have your brain screaming for a donut? Well, for me, those days are gone. It's been about six months since I started taking the supplement and I have no regrets. I believe in my results so much that I'm passing on my 15% discount to you. Try it for two or three months and see if you have a miraculous sweet tooth cure or maybe just better focus and clarity. It's definitely worth a try. Now back to our conversation. Um, I don't think it's, I don't think it's true. I think every animal has their, their, you know, specialness or whatever. Um, cows are herd animals, right? So they're very accustomed to it, like being around other animals and things like that. But I don't really think that we've ever challenged the intelligence of a cow, right? Like I notice every little thing about Dolly. Like I notice when she notices that somebody needs attention. I notice like I, she can sense that kind of stuff. We had a situation where we were at a facility. Somebody wanted to touch her. They were in a wheelchair and they didn't really have a lot of use of their hand. She literally, like you mentioned with your dog, walked up, kind of placed her head on his lap. So then he could like touch her. And he, and she did that kind of in a natural form. Right. So I think she's very, very intelligent. I also they have amazing sense of smell and they have amazing sense of hearing. So mm. we'll be walking and there's somebody like down the street or something, you know, not crazy far, but you know, like in a distance and she's already ready to like, Oh, there's somebody, there's somebody over there. Right. Like I'm got to go yeah. greet that person. <laughs> I mean, she's smart. She's, and she, you know, she knows who people are. My, my dad, now that I mentioned that he's home, right. Like he, during the summer took care of her, like, because we have a larger piece of property there and, and that was fun for him to do. And I'm like, Oh, now this business has kind of turned into something that my dad and I can do together, even though I originally started it for him, but she recognizes him, you know, that's really interesting. He knows that that's grandpa, right? Like that's yeah. Does he give her like treats or, or it's just, she just has a connection. He just has a connection. They will move like, so when she, I, I bring her to the house every once in a while, I have a pen in the backyard or whatever. And like my parents will come over and, you know, my dad will be like, Dolly, oh, there they go. And they start talking back and forth, right. To each other. He of course is calling her name and she's moving back at him, acknowledging that, you know, he's there. That's wild. <laughs> I just, I'm like, I'm okay. Sorry, Luna. Luna, my old, the girl dog is always, she's always in here with me and she's laying on the couch, but I'm thinking this cow might be a little smarter than you. (laughs) It's, I mean, it's, it's just interesting. Now it's like, now I wish I'd gotten to know the guy with the miniature cows back in my old town. I'd have to look, I mean, I'm up in a more rural part of California now. So maybe, maybe there's somebody around here with, with cows, not in my community. Well, if you're in Arizona, if you ever pop into Arizona, (laughs) right? Like we're, we're around here, you know. I wish I'd known about you in March because I am. We were in, I swear we drove through Gilbert. We drove close. Okay. We, my husband was at the um, Family Motor Coach Association convention and training. A friend of his <clears throat> wanted to, well, he wants to buy a trailer, <clears throat> excuse me. And he's very uh, meticulous. And so mm-hmm. he wanted to get like training, <laughs> but you're supposed to have your own rig at this place. So he was using our expedition and our our 30 foot travel trailer to learn how to back up and park and turn and all those things that my husband learned just by doing you know we went on a three-week road trip in a rented trailer and the very first place we parked was um 
it was very late. We were very tired and very hungry. It was very dark and very narrow. And yeah, it was a trial by fire. So we learned pretty oh, quickly. Wow. And, you know, yeah, that's kind of how you learn some things. But yeah, so they were there. Um, the two men were there. And then the, the us two wives flew in. And then my husband and I drove up the eastern part of California to get home because he's like, well, we could go from Phoenix to L.A. and then drive up I-5. I'm like, no, thanks. I'd rather stay home. Nothing interesting to see on I-5. There are cows there. You know, you probably heard a hair branch pass through that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's not very interesting. <laughs> so but going up the eastern part of California. Now, I am a like at least third generation Californian. I have to ask about my um, great grandmother or my great, great grandmother. I got to ask my uncle about that one. I don't know how far back it goes because we have a lot of cognitive, um, disease on my mom's side of the family. So there's a lot of family history that's lost, Oh, but I'm like, where in the hell is this, this beautiful part of California been my whole life? <laughs> I'm just like, I did not know how beautiful the Eastern part of California was. That's embarrassing. Cause I'd been, you know, only been here 55 years. <laughs> Well, you never know. Um, you know, like we're the the plan is to grow Dolly Star Foundation. Like the the you know, we would like to get, actually get a physical building where we can do because right now I take her to facilities, but I know there's a lot of like people that want like one-on-one cow therapy or whatever. We just right at the moment don't have a facility that we can like do that. So eventually, you know, with fundraising and things like that, we want to to get a facility, get some more cows that we can do. My husband lives in California. Like that would be another like great place to like have an additional like Dolly Star Foundation. Um, at, I think they'd be great everywhere, but you know, we have to start in one spot. <laughs> start grab- one step at a time. <laughs> I'm talking about, I got visions. I got, you know, you'll be seeing cow therapy everywhere. Well, there is, let's see, there's one up here. I cannot remember the name of it. There's um, in the San Francisco Bay area, in Livermore, which we were talking about, Livermore is not where her husband is. He's in a similar sounding town near Fresno. But in Livermore is a foundation called Connected Horse. So it's a similar therapy. It's equine therapy, obviously. And they work with the person with the cognitive impairment and their um, care partner. Mm-hmm. And the stories they told me when they did their podcast many, many years ago now <laughs> was really fascinating. So it's it's interesting how, you know, you, you hear the typical, oh, you know, play the music from their teenage years or the music that they love and it brings them back. Well, my mom listened to talk radio, so I never got success with music therapy with her, but man, she absolutely loved spending time with, with me and the dogs at the dog park. She would talk to everybody. Oh, yeah. She would tell you that all her dogs were named Misty, which was the last one she had. <laughs> but that was very interesting. Um, but yeah, she just absolutely loved just interacting with the dogs because she'd had dogs all her life, which was her story. She would tell people she had dogs all her life. And then she would launch into this embarrassing part that, um, when she was pregnant with me, my paternal grandmother asked her, well, since you're going to have a baby, you're going to get rid of the dogs. That apparently pissed off my mom to the point that she kept remembering that all the way till she died. <laughs> And my paternal grandmother lived longer than my mom. So there were times I had to figure out how to abort that story because she would tell it to somebody in front of my grandmother. (laughs) Yeah, those were awkward days. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Like, hey, lady, you really upset her because she remembers this. Yeah. Advanced Alzheimer's, but she remembers this story from many, many years ago. Well, because it's a core memory for her, right? (laughs) Apparently, yeah. yeah, I had to learn how when she started, I've had dogs all my life, I'd immediately start asking questions about her dogs. And that's how I learned that the first one was named Misty, which was not true. The last one was named Misty. And they liked that name so much, they just gave all the dogs mis- names Misty. Well, that wasn't true either. But it was interesting. You know, we could talk about dogs for a few minutes. And, and then I didn't have to ha- hear her tell that story again. Because even two and a half years after she passed away, I'm still not ready to hear that story again. Uh-huh. <laughs> So let's see. Um, how old is Dolly now? She's one. Oh, she's one. That's right. You told me that. I knew that I knew I knew that. It just was trying to escape my brain. So how do you do you contact the care homes? Do they ask you to come? Some of both? Like we, how did we've that done both? Uh we've gotten some major national coverage because 
again, like this has never been done before. We have a very, um, we have a very big following on TikTok. We're growing our Instagram. Um, and so I think just because people see her and, you know, they contact us or I'm like, Oh, I'm going to be in that area. It would be really great if we can even like, you know, if I could get three that are like, boom, 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 right. Then I'll contact one that's in the place or whatever, you know, our plan is, is that, you know, the memory care part is the part that like feeds my soul and is my passion because of the situation that why I started it. Right. Mm -hmm. But, um, we get requests from, from children's hospitals. We get requests for schools and, you know, all types of different other facilities. Um, and so I'm trying to grow it again to build a second team of people that will be like, Hey, you know, you're going to be our school people. You're going to be the people that like go to all the elementary schools or, you know, like you're going to go to the, you know, preschools or, you know, anything like that. Um, but it is that slow growing process, right? Like you have to find somebody who knows how to drive a trailer. You have to find somebody who is very, very, you know, in sync with Dolly and, you know, knows all the things and that takes a little bit of time. And so we're less than a year old, right? Our nonprofit will be one year old in December. And so, you know, I think we've really made some amazing movement and I just look forward to like the next year and the five years and 10 years and, you know, you'll be like, oh my God, I was her first podcast. <laughs> yeah, that is true. And they live on forever. And so that's, that's, that's the thing that really kind of like is interesting because you, you know, after my mom passed away and then my grandmother and it's like, I did a episode um, as a tribute to my mom because she's the catalyst for the podcast, obviously. And it's like, even if I'm gone, that's still out there. I'm not even sure you can pull stuff. I mean, like I could, di I could unpublish that episode, but I'm not sure it would go away forever. Right. Not that I'm ever going to do that, but you know, it's just, it's an interesting thing to think. It's like, man, if something happened to me, you know, driving home from my hair appointments two hours away, <laughs> it's like that stuff's there forever. It's like kind of creepy, but kind of neat too. It's like, I'm going to live on. So <laughs> And well, I always tell people I'm going to live as long as my paternal grandmother did. So I got like 47 years to go. Yeah, that's amazing. I think yeah. if I do the math right, 56 and 47. Yeah, that's right. That's correct math. I could do. <laughs> I have to make sure that I I alter the math in a year. So <laughs> so I've been saying 47 years for a little bit. Um, so where so I I found you guys on Instagram. <clears throat> Excuse me. Where else? So TikTok, Instagram, where can people find out more about you and Dolly, especially if they're in the Gilbert, Arizona area or. So we have a website, dollystarfoundation.com um, that has links for donations as well on that site. We have Instagram, which is Miss M-I-S-S Dolly Star. We have TikTok, which is also Miss Dolly Star. Um, I think that's I think that's all. And Facebook. Facebook. Okay. Holly Star Foundation. Well, I'll make sure that the website is linked in the show notes so that you guys right. can find, because I'm sure your socials are all linked there too. Yep. And then people can, hopefully if they got an extra couple bucks, they can make a donation and make this go national within five years. That would be That'd amazing. Be cool. Yeah. So yeah. The next time I, I, I went to Chicago to see a play when, with one of that's was one of my guests. So I'll have to make an effort to go to Arizona now that it's not 120 degrees there right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, and my, next summer, I mean, I we're still in the process of trying to figure everything out. But next summer, my we might be in California. Like I might bring her, you know, because that's where my husband lives. So, you know, we well, might. That's a little closer than but, Arizona. You know, but, well, who knows? You know what I mean? Like a lot can happen in, in a year or whatever. So, but. Yeah. If we didn't learn that from the last two and a half years. <laughs> You're never going to learn that life is very unpredictable, but yeah. that'd be great. Yeah. If you guys make it to California, definitely let me know Yeah, because I have a hybrid so I can drive from one end of the state to the other. <laughs> um, well, I drove from my old hometown to LA and a third of the way back before I needed gas. So I can get to wherever you are pretty easily. Even Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad we have a hybrid right now because <laughs> California's gas is insane. But I know. I was just there. It was pretty crazy. 
Yeah. I love it how people are like, oh my God, I paid four dollars. It's like, I can't remember the last time I paid four dollars. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but then I look at Europe and it's like, okay, well, bitch. It's like it's all comparative, right? Right. So this is wonderful. And I appreciate I'm so excited that I got to be your first podcast. Thank you for sharing yeah. that you were going to be on this morning with your Instagram followers. I'm contemplating TikTok, but I really am not a fan of making videos all the time. So I might have to get over that and just jump on over there. So. You just have a cow running around in a pen and all of a sudden you become viral. It's it's pretty insane. I mean, some of her videos have hit like 15 million views. That's crazy. So it's yeah. a different type of therapy. Like I, I said, you know, like there's the therapy that I bring her into, you know, the memory care. There's the people that see her on the street and they're like, you just made my day. You just made, and you're like, okay, that's great. You know, check it off. I made somebody's day today, you know, whatever. And then we get that in, in, on social media as well. Like I'll post her in a costume or I'll post her running around or, you know what, you know, the, the number one video is me washing her. People love to watch me giving her a bath. So it's on there. It's on TikTok. It's on our Instagram. So if you want to see how I give her a bath, I mean, that one gets 15 million views. That's crazy. I know. I know. You see, I don't have anything that exciting to do videos and my mom's gone. So it's like, that's my, like the dog is asleep on the couch. I'm sitting here talking on the computer. That is not a very interesting video. (laughs) Maybe you have to give him a bath. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, I need to get a, a better camera or phone case because the dogs and I go paddle boarding. Oh, and um, now my husband it assures me that my iPhone is good for 30 minutes underwater. But, you know, I use my phone as my web camera. I use my phone for a lot of things. I really don't want to run the risk of killing it yeah. because I was playing in the water. But yeah, the dogs get a ton of attention. Like, our community knows Luna on the paddleboard. I'm not sure they know that that there's a human on the paddleboard too. Right, right. That's kind of great, crazy. People are just, I don't know. We just have this connection with animals. That's just, it's, I think it's more wholesome. It, well, it's unconditional love, right? Yeah. It's that, you know, you don't care if I'm heavy. You don't care if I'm bald. You don't care if I'm, you know, whatever, right? If I'm having a bad day, you love me. If I'm having a great day, you still love me. Like it's that absolute unconditional love. And Luna loves me more when I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> She's a huge beggar. Yeah. Well, I appreciate this. This has been very interesting. I'm really looking forward to meeting you guys in person, whether right. I have to get to Arizona or you come to California, we'll make it happen sometime in 2023. All right. Sounds good. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your podcasts.